Welcome to another episode of the Wholesale Elite Podcast. My name is Aisham Hipshire, and I'm here with my dude, my main dude, Mr. Tanner Santucci again. What's up, brother? What's up, man? How you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good, man. <laughs> dude, this is uh, this is going to be fun because um, you're wearing the same stuff that you were on the last episode. How, back to back, how, baby. How, we go back to back. Okay. So uh, I took off my sweater to make it seem like this is another show, but we'll just, oh, <laughs> I guess I could have said something different, but okay, we're rolling with it. We're, we're rolling, rolling with, with it. it, baby. That's how we roll, man. Okay. So look, here's the deal. This currently we're, we're, we're at episode number two and you know, the first, the very first episode zero 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 was our intro. Right. And then, um, first episode was was my interview, and now this is the part I'm most excited for, and I'm most excited for our listeners because I think that they could probably relate to your story way more than mine. Um, Tanner Santucci is the young goat, as I like to call him, man. He's uh, he's twenty, what, twenty six? Five. Yeah, twenty five. Twenty five. 25. Don't give him, don't give him that six yet. Um, twenty five and crushing it, uh, and can't wait again. I cannot wait for you guys to to hear the story because it's it's to me it's just one of the those just classic entrepreneurial tales, um, where we're seeing a star in the making almost, you know. And and I'm not trying to fluff them up or anything. I've been in this world and lived in this world for for a few years now, and I've seen the people that have what it takes, and I've seen the people who who don't, unfortunately. And Tanner not only has what it takes but he's doing everything that i'm doing now in my 40s he's doing in his 20s and so <laughs> i'm uh i'm i'm honored to be able to interview you brother and uh and have you share the world or, or share your story with the world rather um, yeah i mean that was that was quite the uh quite the hype up you're making me blush man i mean that's Bro. that was nice I mean, it's the truth. I, I've had many partners in business, right? Not one of them have worked out great. And I'm sure a lot of that was my fault, you know? Um, but you're the first person, man, that we, we just started working organically, you know, and us just uh, trading stories back and forth. And, you know, now we work together and we've worked together for a, a while, a little while now. It feels like yeah. way longer than it really has been. Really? We've done deals together. We've got a podcast going. We don't get sick of each other. We see each other <laughs> almost every day. Um, and we're both so passionate about what we do. And so I cannot wait to share with everyone how you know, a person, again, you know, as young as you are from your background is doing what you're doing at the level that you're doing it at. So why don't you take us back, man? Give us that origin story. Where, where do you, where do you come from? How, how did you step into this world? What happened before real estate that got you here? Yeah. I mean, it's a, uh, it's, it's a long story. So I, I have to give the synopsis, the brief story of it. We got um, time, bro. We got time. Nah, we can, <laughs> we keep it somewhat short. Because ultimately yeah. actually a life goal of mine is to end up writing a book. Um, okay. And more about my story. Cause there's a lot of it. We're probably still only on chapter one, let's be honest, but, For sure. I, but I want to be able to write a book and not to, to boast or anything along those lines, but I want to be able to inspire and motivate. Um, and so that's, that's my, one of my life goals. But anyways, back to my origin story, I guess you could say is, yeah, man, I'm, I'm from Oklahoma. I live in Oklahoma and Tulsa, Oklahoma, shout out, um, boomer sooner. Um, my story is kind of, like I said, it's kind of funky, kind of weird, kind of fun, all of the above. And I think, like you said, it, it, it truly can relate to a lot of people. Um, and, and the reason for that being is, um, you know, I, it's not like I grew up with a millionaire family and, you know, you're just, middle class, nothing, nothing crazy got by. And, but, but long story short, I, you know, I played sports my entire life growing up, baseball, football, basketball, golf, you name it. I played it. Um, and throughout high school, I ended up only playing baseball and I was never, I was never a hard worker in the sense of school. I was a hard worker in baseball, but I was never in the sense of school. I hated school because I hated, I hated the whole concept of someone telling you what to do and you can't collaborate. I hated that. Um, cause ultimately in life you collaborate in high school, you don't really notice it, but until you get into the real world, but, um, essentially like I just, I was never the best student. Um, I never really cared about school. Um, but I was always cared about my athletics, which is why I went to school. <laughs> right. Right. Um, right. put in at least effort. Like it wasn't like I just failed out of classes like you know i had good gpa and stuff and so ultimately i ended up going to college my freshman year to play college baseball and um very quickly i learned that i was tired of being told what to do 
extru- like very quickly. Um, and like I said, like growing up with sports, I never really had summers and never had holidays because all my holidays and all my summers were spent traveling. So I get to see all my friends going out for spring break, go do other things. I never had that luxury. And I, you know, you kind of feel left out. Um, and not that I didn't love playing sports in those times, but that was kind of a big thing. So by the time I got to college and someone, my, you know, your coaches are making your schedule for you. Um, they literally have your daily schedules written out. Like you're going to class at these times because we need you to practice at this time. And then we need you to hop on a bus and go play a game at this time. And then all that kind of stuff. And so first semester of college, real quickly, I learned like, dude, I'm tired of being told what to do. I'm over it. <laughs> Um, and you know, throughout high school and throughout college, um, I ended up giving up college baseball, by the way, um, just to become a student. And that was, that was like the first freedom I ever felt in my entire life was in the sense of, um, I wasn't being told what to do. I made my own class schedule. I, you know, I was able to do what I wanted to do. I was able to go to all these spring breaks and go do the fun college stuff. Right. And throughout college, I wanted to be a chiropractor. And the reason for me wanting to be a chiropractor, looking back at it, that was like my first taste of wanting to be an entrepreneur and like actually realizing it. And the reason for that being is when I wanted to be, chose to be a chiropractor or wanted to be is because I wanted that ability for time freedom. Chiropractors get to make their own schedule. You get to build your own schedule. You get a, And the other thing was you get to build your own clientele. How hard do you work? Because ultimately that's your business. And you don't just, people don't just usually go online unless you pay for a lot of marketing, but you don't just go online and find a chiropractor and click it without building rapport almost. It's almost sure. like real estate in a sense. Sure. You have to build that trust with your clients and all that kind of good stuff. So um, that was kind of my first taste when I realized looking back that that's where my entrepreneur journey started. Um, so long story short, how I got into real estate, specifically wholesale real estate was um, my senior year of college or going into my senior year of college is when COVID hit. Um, and campus closed. I was at the University of Oklahoma at the time, which is like two and a half hours from my hometown. Um, campus closed. My job that I was working there, obviously, I didn't. It, that was closed because I was a houseboy on campus for Kappa. Shout out Kappa. Um, <laughs> but you know, I, I had to move home. I, my degree, I was a science degree. I was a medical degree, sports and exercise science. So a lot of my my senior classes were labs. I had to work on machines and I had to do all that, learn all that stuff. But without being on campus, you can't do that. You can't learn that stuff online. Right. Um, and that's what scares me also about the future with all these kids that learned all this stuff online. Like what kind of doctors are we going to have? But anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyways, so my ad- advisor at the time was like, well, Tanner, you really, unless you change your degree to like psychology, which is what I was planning on minoring in anyways, um, you, you, you're going to have to sit out a whole year. And I was kind of bummed because I, all my friends have already graduated. I was actually going to be a fifth year because I changed my degree from business to science. But um, during that time when I moved home, that was kind of a full year off of school. I went to work for my brother-in-law who was an entrepreneur. He owns a business. And that was my first taste of actually getting to see what what that's like, right? Um, he owned a business. He did all the work himself. He did all, he'd print the receipts out himself. He'd ship everything himself. Like he did from start to finish everything himself. Um, and so that's kind of when I started dabbling on how to make money online. Most entrepreneurs do e-commerce, all these little other, right. other little things. And that's when I came across, uh, an advertisement or whatever on YouTube and it was for wholesale real estate. Hey, you can sell this piece of paper for 10 K shout out Max Maxwell. Cause I think hey. it, it, it was, it was <laughs> Max or Jerry Norton. And actually one of those two was the first videos I saw. And, you know, obviously that's intriguing. Hey, make 10 K sell on this piece of paper and 30 days you're like wow okay 10k in 30 days that's nice and so i ended up <clears throat> asking my brother-in-law um because he's he was saw in the office in his office I, I, he would see me researching real estate stuff and he's like hey i have a friend you know that's an investor here in tulsa you want to reach out to him and i said absolutely so long story short i ended up doing acquisitions for him for free um i say for free it wasn't paid by the hour or anything so he would actually just send me a list of cold calling where you call the sellers um for those that don't know you just call the seller literally just asking if they want to sell a house so i sell their house and you want to buy it um and i was scared shitless i knew nothing at the time um i remember i was like uh and it's, i started <laughs> watching videos in between all this and learning and trying to divulge as much information podcast and the whole shebang um, but that was my first taste really of real estate. I never did a deal with him. Um, I felt bad, but I never did a deal with him. But he gave a ton of value. He was willing to help. He was willing to understand, hey, I'm new. I will pay for your list. Just call these people. Here's 200 people at a time. Call them. If you get any, if you get anyone that says yes, just send them to me. I'll close the deal and I'll pay you a commission. 
I was like, well, shit, that's easy enough. I just got to get a yes. And so, but anyways, I never ended up doing a deal with them. Um, but that's really where I fell in love with it because he also helped me understand wholesaling a lot more. Um, Interesting. And, okay. and it was, it was, it was tough because I was scared shitless because for whatever reason, you know, playing sports, uh, most athletes will tell you that, oh, pressure doesn't get to you. Uh, oh, fear. What is that? But no, really, like that was probably one of the scariest things I've ever done is cold calling a list for the first time because uh, you know, I always watching the podcast or listen to podcasts, watching videos, you always hear, you know, people getting cussed out or sued and all this. And so all these little thoughts in my head, I'm like, Oh God, I don't want someone to tell me, fuck you or all these little things. But sure enough that that happened for sure. I was going to say, what what are some of the worst things that, that happened when you were cold calling? Let's get the fears out there. Let's get, I actually had the, the, the craziest one I had was I called the seller. They were super nice on the first call and like super nice. And so they ended up telling, no, I don't want to sell my house, but they were nice about it. And we hung up the conversation. Well, like 30 minutes later, I'm still calling from my cell phone, not a dialer, just hand dialing. And I get a call from them later. I'm like thinking, oh, wow, did they change their mind? I see their number <laughs> pop up. Sure enough, they go, wait, are you an investor? And I was like, did, in my head, I'm like, did they not recognize that when I first called? But then they literally were like, you guys are the worst people of all time. And I was so I was like confused as hell because they were so nice on the first call, but that was like, and they dropped F bombs and you know, the, the whole shebang. And it was like 30 seconds of F bombs. It really was, but that was like the scariest call I've ever had to this day. And ever since then, it's like, dude, that's, the, that's it. Like, I'm just going to get an F. I've Let heard that. Ask you. Yeah. I, I want, I really want to break this thing down because I think this, this is going to help a lot of people. When you got that phone call, how long did it take you to make your next phone call? It took me if, uh, about five minutes. It really did. Um, and that bad. doesn't sound like a long time, but when you're just staring at your phone and I literally had the number ready for the next call <laughs> and I was so scared to push that call button. And so literally like five minutes went by and I was just like sitting there like, do I call, do I call, do I call? That phone yeah. weighs a ton. When, when on the other end of this is pain and you just <laughs> know it, that phone weighs a ton, you know? Um, so, so five minutes isn't bad, man. A lot of people yeah. will hang it up, you know, for the day and they'll, they'll, you know, listen to some TTP or something, the, you know, the next day before they, they make their calls. But for you to, uh, your very first, like super negative interaction to, to make another dial five minutes later. Wow. Like, well, I think, I think that goes back to where I was at mentally, um, at the time. And that was because at the time I was in like, I was, it was chaos, like for me mentally, not like my surroundings, but just me as a person, because I, like I said, I already felt behind in life because all my friends had already graduated college. Some of them were married. Some of them were engaged. They all had, you know, jobs and they all were, you know, they were literally, one of my friends was building a house at the time. And I'm like, wow, I'm way behind in life. Right. Yeah. And so it was, I, there was a lot and a lot of mental battles that I played with because that's, like I said, when I found out what wholesaling was and I found out real estate, that's, I made the decision during that year that I was off from school from COVID. I made that decision. I was not going to go back to school. I, I remember specifically, I was like, dude, I don't, school's not for me. And like that, like real estate was like my light bulb, especially like wholesaling. That was my light bulb moment. And I didn't, you I always heard people say, you're going to have a light bulb moment. You're going to figure out your purpose. You're going to figure out all this other stuff. But I never truly believed it until it actually happened. And then I was like, holy shit, it's, it's a thing. <laughs> you know, like the light bulb moment's a thing. Now, when that light bulb mo- moment happened, did the fear of or anxiety of what are my parents going to think? What are my friends going to think? Did any of that creep into your mind or were you just so gung ho? You're like, I don't care. Screw it. Real estate. I'm going to drop out of college and do real estate. Talk about that, that part. No, I was a hundred percent scared shitless. Um, <laughs> because I like, like scared shitless, like my whole family is like, go to school, go to school, go to school, go to school. Like that's all they know. Right. And, um, go, go work your way up a company. Like that's all, that's all, you know. And so I was scared shitless. Like I said, all my friends had jobs engaged. And so, yeah, I was like, what's everyone going to think of me? Um, a college dropout or like, you know, dropped out my senior year. It's not like I dropped out my sophomore year. Like I, I literally had two semesters of school left. Like I could go finish college and probably one semester if I just crammed everything in. Like that's how close I was. And I literally said, screw it. Um, and I think that's just because of the type of person I am where it was, it's a, ri- I'm not too scared of risk. I was in the past, but I realized, like I said, when that light bulb moment hit, like there was no plan B, 
Like I knew from the moment I figured out what wholesaling was and the moment I got my first taste of it, I knew it was a wraps. I was like, I literally mentally told myself there's nothing in this world that I would rather be doing than real estate and wow. wholesaling specifically. And so um, I didn't have a plan being placed. My whole family still to this, still to this day is like, Tanner, go back, finish your degree, have a plan B, <laughs> have a plan B. You're like, you're so close. And I'm like, no, like it, I don't believe in plan B's. Because sure, I believe you already set yourself up to fail. Absolutely. Whatever your plan A is, that's the only plan you should have. Because if you have a plan B, you've literally already mentally failed. You've set yourself up to fail because you've already accepted that, oh, I have a backup plan. Well, guess look, what? Yeah, go ahead. I, I want to jump in real quick and say something on that because you said something very powerful that I think a lot of people can overlook. And and it's the, it's the reality. It is the harsh reality of life. And- Brother, when I say this, I heard this for years and years and years. I heard this, but I never believed it. And it wasn't until I was in the position I am now and I look back at at the successes and things that that have happened, I get it. The saying is 1% doubt and you're out. Yep. 1% doubt and you're out. Yep. You have to, I'm telling you guys, before you make a move in real estate, become freaking obsessed become obsessed. Yep. Don't, don't pick up the phone and make your first call until you are just, you don't have to know all the answers. You don't, you don't, you just have to know that you can find all the freaking answers yep. that that's the confidence that you have to have. No doubt. If you start moving forward in the action with doubt in your heart, you're going to be sowing bad seeds and they're not going to grow. They're not going to germinate. And so Tanner said something so important that I just wanted to make sure people caught on to that. He had no doubt every, he had all these haters, you know, quote unquote haters, you know, I'm sure they, they meant well, they weren't really hating, but they were, they were doing what they thought was best for him. Hey Tanner, go get a job, man. That's what everyone else is doing. You know, Hey Tanner, stick it out, man. Stick out college. That's what everyone else is doing. You know, Hey Tanner, man, don't, you know, maybe it's a little too early for you to be thinking you can be a real estate investor. Like, who are you? You know, he overcame all that. He had zero doubt. There was no plan B. He had no ships no ships left to re- to retreat. He burnt his ships. He burnt them to the ground. Um, so I, I, I applaud you for that, man. Well, I was going to say, and he, here's the thing that, um, like, this is guys, like, I moved back home to, to do real estate. Like, I, I literally, at the time after college, I moved back home because I was, I was, I was, I mentally accepted that I was going to be broke before I became rich. And so I literally already mentally accepted that. And I was willing to take that sacrifice. There's a lot of sacrifice that go into it, but I was willing to take the mental back. I was willing to fight with myself knowing that in the long term, it's going to pay off. It's going to be, it's going to pay off. It's going to pay off. And like, like I said, like for instance, that five minute call after the first time I ever got cussed out on the phone, the reason it only took me five minutes is because I knew there's nowhere else for me to go. There's nothing for else me to do. What am I going to do? Hang up the phone? Like, no, I don't have a choice. I have to, I have to do something. And so, and I feel like a lot of people that do have that plan B type mindset would have hung up the phone, would have called it a day, but because I, I didn't give myself that option, that choice. And I was so desperate. I really was at the time. I was so desperate to mentally feel, get out of where I was, that I was, I was ready to go all in. I was ready to give everything I had. And that's exactly what I did. Um, let me ask you, have you ever suffered? So, so there's a saying, um, comparison is, is the thief of joy, right? Like, um, compare and despair. You know, I've, I've heard people say, um, was there ever a time in your real estate business? And we'll, we'll, I want to jump to the, to first, the first deal after this, but was there ever a time in your business where you felt held back by comparing yourself to other successes? All the, all the time, all e- even, now it's not that I don't really compare myself now, but when I first started, absolutely, because you would hear the stories of all the people that got their first sixty thousand dollar deal in thirty day, their first thirty days of wholesaling, all these different things. So of course I'm going to compare myself to them because at that time, like I said, I was I really was desperate, and I think that's why I personally like to relate to new wholesalers is because I know exactly what it feels like to be at the very bottom of the barrel. Or not only not only in business, but literally in your surroundings and how everyone thinks of you. And so I know what what it feels like to almost be trapped and lost, and there's no hope. And so um, 
yeah, comparing yourself, you don't almost don't have a choice because the only way to, the only way to get out of that almost, I feel like at times you have to compare yourself because you have to look at someone above you and you have to say, the only way I'm going to get to them is study them, figure out what they're doing, figure out exactly what they're doing. And then you have to compare, am I doing what they were doing almost? And so that's when I got into reading and that's when my mindset really started changing and adapting was really realizing like, again, I didn't have a choice and now I have to see who's successful, who's doing what I want to do and how can I end up being them and study them. But now comparing, I don't compare because comparison is the thief of joy. It really is. And so once you get that first taste of, of, oh shit, I'm doing it. That's when you really need to stop comparing in my opinion. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and there's a difference in, in comparing yourself and then, you know, also looking up to someone, you know, and, and I think it is healthy to start by comparing, you know, what do I have that Jamil Damji doesn't have? You know, what do I have that John Galan doesn't have, or, or, you know, any of these, these people that are out there in the world killing it. Shout out to you, John. I had yeah, to shout out. that one in there. Um, <laughs> anyways, what, what do I have that these guys don't have? You know, I think that, that that's healthy, but just make sure that who you're comparing yourself to is someone that, that, you know, is a realistic, uh, uh, you know, desire. That's someone that you kind of, you know, do aspire to be like, and I use those terms very, very, very loosely. Um, nonetheless, um, you know, you, you look, you learn to eventually look up to people and, and you had mentors and, and now you're, you know, now you're obviously following, um, you know, your own path, but you're also kind of using the, uh, you know, what other successful people have done, you know, as, as a great measuring stick for you, you know, I'd say. And so, man, let's, let's go back to your, your first deal. So we didn't talk first deal that much, but I'd like to know, kind of walk us through, like how, how'd you get it? You know, what are some of the weird crappy things that happened in that process? And, and uh, yeah, just let's talk first deal stories. Yeah. My, uh, my first deal was unorthodox. And what I mean by unorthodox was not that the deal itself was unorthodox and how I ended up acquiring the deal was unorthodox. Uh, because at the time, in, in the week that I actually acquired the deal, my truck broke down. I had not, I had, it was like two grand to fix. Didn't have the money. It was like 1,500, two grand, somewhere in there. Didn't have the money to fix. It was sitting at the Ford dealership. My laptop at the time broke, had no computer. And again, most people find that as a reason to not do it. Right. Did your, uh, did your dog leave you and your girl too? It I mean, it, like was, it was a shit week. Bro. Like it was, that was like, <laughs> that was literally one of my lowest weeks. I literally, wow. remember, I remember sitting in my room and all I had was my phone. And I remember I had to do something like, holy, like I had to do something. And so I, I don't know if God got, I mean, God definitely had to put this podcast episode right in front of me at the time, but it was, I remember specifically it was wholesale Inc. It was a Lauren Hardy episode and it was Lauren Hardy explaining virtual wholesaling. And at the time that resonated with me extremely, like incredibly, because at the time when I started wholesaling was right in, almost in the same month that Oklahoma became illegal without a license. And so I would, that was an oh shit moment. Like, uh, I don't have a license. I'm not a real estate agent. Um, so I knew I was scrambling. I was desperate. So I lose my phone, lose my, my, my truck sitting in the dealership. And I come across that episode and it was literally like just like a 10 or 15 minute episode. And it was Lauren just explaining how she does virtual wholesaling, meaning she goes acquires real estate in other states from her computer, from her couch, from her backyard, whatever it may be. And so I remember sitting in my room, heard that episode. And I, she literally was like, when you're picking a market, pick a market with a, the Facebook group, the real estate investor Facebook groups go pick a Facebook group where it has a lot of people in it. I go deal. I just like went step by step on this episode, ended up going on Facebook and I type in, I don't know why Indianapolis popped in my head. I really don't, but Indianapolis, Indiana popped in my head. It's not even a state. I would, I love all my investors or whoever's listening to this. <laughs> Shout I, out Indy. I love you guys. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> but really it's, it wasn't like a state where like, it was like, damn, I would love to move there. I would love to, whatever. And so, but it had a ton of followers on the group. So I went in the group and again, I listened to Lauren Hardy and she said, post in the group that you have tons of buyers and that if you're a wholesaler and you have something under contract, send it your way and you'll dispo it. And I was like, easy enough. I don't know what any of this means, but we're going to do it. And surely enough from my phone sitting in my room, I get on Facebook and I put in a message. Hey, if you have a deal, I can help you move it. My phone, I mean, I didn't, it didn't even blow up. Like I literally only probably had seven people maybe comment on it and say, Hey, yeah, help me out. And I kind of ciphered through them. I didn't, wasn't really good at comping probably. I mean, I may have been, I may have not been, I don't know, 
Um, this is like 10 or 11 months ago. But I remember there's one specifically that hit me up. And for whatever reason, I just kind of resonated with her a lot better. Um, she was just super sweet, super nice. Her deal looked good. Um, and she was like, hey, if you dispose the deal, I'll JV it with you. Um, I was like, deal. So what I do, I didn't know any buyers in the Indiana. I'd never talked to anyone in Indiana. She was like literally the first person I ever talked to in Indiana. So I get on Facebook and I start DMing every investor that I can find in the Facebook group where they put their, you know, whatever email. And I just DM like I stay for Saturdays. I got the deal Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I was relentless. I mean, all day, all night. I was sitting there DMing and sending emails. I remember my eyes were like dry and hurting <laughs> because I was looking at my screen for so long, just it. sending the same emails and sending, because I was just copy and paste and everything. Because I was smart enough to not type out every little message. So I just made templates and I just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy. And I sent that to so many people and I got so many no's, so many. And I literally, Monday rolls around after like two days and I feel like I hit up everyone in these Facebook groups and there's like thousands of people. And money comes around. Sure enough, I, I, I wake up to a DM on my phone and it was, it was one of the investors. Hey, I'll take the deal. And I was, nice. that was my first moment really where it was like, uh, uh, like I was speechless. I was like, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, Cause I've heard of all the stories from the podcast of like deals falling through and whatever. And that, and then I hop on the phone with the buyer. I, again, I didn't really know what I was doing, but he, he was cool enough and you know he was like i'll put in emd put in emd my, actually my first deal went went by really smoothly uh, made a few grand and um i didn't even have any troubles but one thing i will say for new wholesalers or anyone that listens is if your first deal goes super easy expect the next two or three <laughs> to be absolutely hell and that's exactly what happened to me so just just prepare yourself Kind of like kids, you. right? For those those of us with kids, if, if you had a super smooth first kid, that number two is a doozy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I always tell people like, hey, if your first deal is easy, get ready, strap in. Because um, I always tell people now too, it's I would almost rather their first deal be hell. Oh yeah. Like, go through the ringer because you're going to be extremely happy that you did. You're going to learn. Um, and so, yeah, but my first deal was other than finding it, um, the whole process, it literally closed in like a week. I mean, how much did you make on your first one? 5k. Nice. So, and I made 5k in seven days. Well, really, if you count the weekend, it's like nine days, but, or it was from Friday, Friday, I acquired it, spent literally Saturday and Sunday until my eyes were bleeding. Monday, I wake (laughs) up thinking my, you know, thinking the deal's dead. No one said yes to me. Not even, I didn't even get offers back. Every person that hit me up was like, no, 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 no. And I was like mentally drained. I was like, God, this sucks. I don't want to be told no this much. And sure enough, Monday comes around, buyer's like, I'll take it, puts EMD in that day. Literally that Friday, we close. So yeah, it is wow. like seven days, I guess, since. And that was my first taste. And that was literally, I'm not even kidding you. I got a deal in Indiana within seven days, essentially. It was like seven or nine days. I forgot exactly. From the time I got on a Facebook group on my phone, no computer, no driving for dollars, none of the fancy shit, no prop stream, no badge, no nothing from Facebook. I got my first deal with it, it because I hustled. I was willing. I love to- those stories. I, I absolutely love those stories. And here's what I also love. You know, there you guys are going to see, you know, throughout this uh, throughout this podcast, we're going to talk to a lot of people that have a lot of different stories. And, you know, one thing that that kind of gets I don't want to say gets hyped, um, but it's fun. It's fun when, when you were that person who got your deal when you're in the weeds and you're brand new and you locked it up and you sold it. Oh, my gosh. Is it like it's like the biggest victory of feeling ever. Um but there's people who in this business right now are crushing it, crushing it, crushing it, who it took them a year to do their first deal. It took them a year plus to do their first deal, six months, eight months, 10 months. So I I, I say, you know, I, I'm glad we talked about the comparison as the thief of joy before, before this talk, because Tanner, brother, I hear the, I hear the excitement because it was exciting. You know, it took me a, a, a you know, a few weeks to get my first deal and closed it, you know, fairly, fairly quickly. And 10 grand took you seven days, five grand, you know, these stories are out there, you know, and here's the thing. I also don't want you to tell yourself that it's going to take a long time. You know, yeah. don't do that. Don't, well, don't. Go ahead. I do want to butt in real quick and say Please. for anyone that thinks I literally started wholesaling and made 5k in seven days. Like I was wholesaling with, you know, my story goes back to working for the, it was months in the buildup, but in terms of the virtual, my Indian, Indianapolis, 
in my own market, it took I couldn't even get a deal. I'm driving for dollars and I'm <laughs> yeah, people yeah, I'm in my own market. But sure enough, I use my phone and Facebook and I make 5K in seven days. I love that's it. the power of this business. But that's also at the same time why, like you were saying, like don't ex- don't 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 think you're not going to get a deal done in forever just because you hear stories of that. But also please for the, for the life of me, don't think you're going to do a deal in seven days. I've only done a deal in seven days twice. And the uh, second time it happened was because just the, uh, the relationship over time I had built with that Absolutely. investor. But Absolutely. I don't seven days. It's, it's r- on your first deal. Like that. I didn't have that mindset. I was ready to be like, I was in that bitch. I, Cause I knew from failing so many times before I was ready to be in Indianapolis. I was ready for it to take 60 days to do a deal. But sure and you know what? I like, I really, I truly feel like that's the message here. You know, like my expectation was I had an expectation. It wasn't very high or anything crazy, but I, I gave myself a long runway, you know, six months, eight months, nine months. I remember thinking very long term, you know, and it wasn't nine months to do my first deal. It was nine months to kind of get a grip on this thing, you know, it was right. nine months to get a little bit of a handle. And of course I knew I was going to have to do deals along the way, but I didn't even recognize that the the first deal pressure was even there. I didn't learn that until after I did my first deal. And I started seeing people say, Oh, it took me so long. I'm like, Oh, this whole first deal thing's a thing. People like it's a mental block almost that people have like, get out of that. Like, don't even worry about the deal, you know, build relationships. We say in our company all the time, you'll hear us say this. It's not about the deal. It's about the relationship. Just get good at building relationships. The deals will happen. Yep. So, yeah, deal, deal, deals will come natural. I mean, it's, it's like I said, and I, I think a lot of it had to do with just kind of like your story where you kind of told everyone you were new. I, I didn't tell the wholesaler I was new at the time, but I told, <laughs> the, I, I told the buyer I was new. So the buyer was understanding like, hey, dude, like I'll take care of everything. And like also the one thing I want to point out, which is weird and you, you don't, I, I don't know if I've ever heard another wholesaler say this after their first deal, but it didn't even feel like it was a deal to me. Mm. I, I didn't even feel reward. It didn't feel rewarding. It really didn't. And I hate to say that because I don't want to put that in other people's brains. Like, oh, if I do a deal, it's not gonna be rewarding. But like, it truly didn't even feel rewarding. I didn't even feel the, like, I didn't even feel like I was in the business. I was doing business until after my third or fourth deal. I really didn't. And it's a weird feeling. And like I said, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever heard someone else say that truly. Um, about this business. Um, but, and I, st- till this day, I still cannot put my, I don't know why it felt that way. I really don't. I don't know if it wasn't because it was a virtual market and I was so new that I was literally learning as I was doing it. Like no, I didn't have contracts, like nothing. Like I was literally so brand new and I was just taking hell of a, like hell of action. <laughs> like <laughs> so I was true. taking hell of action. So like, true, bro. And I was kind so of watching true. And so I, I don't know. I, I would love to know looking back and I'm sure someday it'll hit me, but I would love to know why my first couple of deals didn't feel like I was even doing, didn't even feel like I had a business, which I didn't. I really didn't. I was just me doing almost the side hustle, but trying to do it. <laughs> um, and so you know, it's fascinating that you say that because my first deal as well, uh, when, when, you know, even when I got the DocuSign back from the buyer, you know, of my assignment, and everything i was so focused on okay okay that's i got that part of the process done okay what's next let me go watch a few youtube videos and that's next okay cool and i remember people saying you know you got to follow up and make sure that the emd's there because there's some horse or, okay i was so in yeah. the weeds of the deal that when it, when the wire hit the account it wasn't like woohoo 10 grand that it, there wasn't even excitement i'm going to tell you exactly what happened when the wire hit my account the wire hit my account I took a screenshot of it and I posted it. I posted it, letting people know this is real because I saw other people doing that. Right. I literally did. Like I, it, the emotion hadn't even set in yet. And so even deals later, like after multiple deals later, I'm just in business now. You know, it's yeah. like if when you open up an ice cream store, you don't get stoked when you sell your first thing ice cream. Maybe you do, whatever. But it's like, man, we're just getting started. Like we got a lot more that's ice cream felt. to sell. <laughs> that's how it felt. And I think like I get more excited now doing deals. And I I do a lot more deals now, right? You know this. I've done sure. multiple deals with you. And I get more excited doing deals now than I did when I first started. And I would really, really love at some point to know why. Like, I would really love God to tell me like, dude, why? Like, right. just give me an answer. But I still don't know. But I get so much more amped up. And I think 
to be honest with you, I think a lot of it has to do with the power I feel like I have now because I have so much control of my life now, mentally, physically, professionally. There's so much more control. And I feel like I actually am able to, to move in the direction I want and do the things that I want because my bank account's full and I have the time freedom now. And um, I say time freedom. I own a, we own a business. There's no time freedom. It's 12 hour days, it's 14 hour days. But anyways, but like you, you have that freedom. And so I think when I first started, and it sounds like you can somewhat attest, is that you're, you're still figuring everything out. So it, you're, you're still learning as you're going. And thus, it makes it difficult to appreciate the work that you put in to get your first deal, get your second right. deal, get your third deal. Right. right. Now I know how much harder it is. And, Absolutely. And it's just a grind. You know, you're saying, you know, I, I, I want to find out, like, I'd love to ask God to say it. And, you know, maybe this is a great opportunity for us to kind of learn this, land this plane. And I think that we are going to talk to a lot of people that are going to help us understand, you know, that answer here in the future. So um, guys, we've got, you know, this podcast, if you haven't been able to tell by now, it's unlike any of the other podcasts. And it's because this was, this was not started to get us ratings or reviews. This was not started to build our business. Although, you know, after we put all the dots together, we're like, oh man, we could actually get some referrals from this thing. This was truly started because when, when me reading all the books that I've read, jumping into the podcast world or jumping into the, excuse me, the, the wholesale world, when I was listening to podcasts, I didn't really see anything that stuck, stuck on the mindset, you know what I mean? But I knew that was one of the most important parts. Everything was talking about, you know, tell us your story and stories are great. You know, stories, stories are incredible. You know, they say, they say facts uh, sell or facts tell, stories sell, you know, cause they do, they sell you on the vision. They sell you on the idea of what it was. So the stories were great, but so few of them dove deep into the mindset and like so few of them did. And so I'm like, gosh, if we can just, you know, because I heard so many podcasts where I wanted to ask a why question. You know, they did this one thing. Okay, why? What was your thoughts process around? Why did you take that move? Why did you zig instead of zag? You know, and so we started this podcast as a as a labor of love, essentially something that we knew the marketplace, you know, could use hopefully. Um, and you know, it would just be a great catalog of you know some of the people that are just crushing it in the wholesale real estate world. Um, and I mean, I'm happy to announce that we've got people like Jamil Damji coming up. Um, and, and Jamil's the goat, bro. Like Jamil's the goat. <laughs> he's, he's the that guy. Like half a million a month or something crazy. Personal income. Yeah. yeah. Half, over, you know, close to half a million a month in person and take home. Um, and you know, again, Jamil says it even, and I'm sure he'll probably say it on the show, you know, he, he can't even spend that much money. So it's not the money. You know, he still shows up to work every day and helps his team, helps the Astro fam, the Astro community. Um, he's just a phenomenal guy. So we're going to have all kinds of great people on the show. Um, and Tanner, I am excited to interview all these people with you, brother, and just to do this journey together, man. This is going to be phenomenal. Right. So, bro, um, I want to ask you before we before we go, what's one thing that you would love brand new wholesalers to really know and understand? Um. The, the, I'll keep, I'll do it vague and then I'll break it down real quickly. And that is your mindset. Um, I always tell wholesalers when you get into the business, be ready, accept the fact you're going to get more no's than yeses, and then accept the fact that you could get a fuck you. And if you're, if you're expecting every call, this is what helped me. And if you're expecting every single call you make already will like already accepting that that person on the other end of the line could say, fuck you you're going to be okay with it because that's what helped me get over it. It's like, okay, what's the worst this person can say? F you. Okay, great. Now what's the best thing they can say? Yes. They want to sell their property. Great. We're good. And so the big, the biggest thing is like, don't let fear hinder your success because ultimately fear is what hinders success. So just go out there, take action, be the best person you can be. And, and the biggest, the, the last thing I'll say is the, the best person you can be is the most authentic and honest person you can be. Mm. So please, please, please be yourself, be respectful to those that aren't respectful to you. And just understand that the more genuine and the more real, and the more raw and the more transparent you can be in communicating with whether it's an agent, whether it's a wholesaler, whether it's a seller, title company, whoever, you're going to be more liked in this business and you're going to be able to build way more relationships in this business. So keep that in mind. And 
I would love to <laughs> end it on that. So Amen. Go into that deep A freaking men, brother. Tanner, how can people find you in the world? How can they find you on the socials and connect with you? Well, there, I don't know too many Tanner Santucci. So <laughs> most of my most of my uh, Instagram is Tanner Sant- at Tanner Santucci. Uh, pretty much Facebook's at Tanner Santucci. Just type in any social media you want to find me. Type in Tanner Santucci. I try to have all my profile pictures the exact same, so it's not like weird, and so you can easily identify. Um, but yeah. And also if you need to hit me up, um, I'll, I'll give out my number. I could care less. Um, cause I like working with people and networking. So if you need to text me and you're a new wholesaler and you're kind of feeling down in the dumps, whatever it may be, hit my line at 918-638-3035. And I would love to love to chat with you and connect with you. Dope guys. You heard it first. Tanner gave out his phone number, like a gangsta <laughs> Hopefully I get calls from like germany or something i know man you're gonna get them you're gonna get them too well dude again it's been an honor um I'm, I'm glad we got to get this one um down i'm glad we got to record this one um i love you bro you're you're a great great partner too, uh you're an incredible real estate wholesaler i cannot wait to see what the future holds for you and for us man and so with that guys uh we're gonna wrap this episode up um, from here on, it's no longer just Tanner and I, it's going to be Tanner and I and, a, and another person who's, uh, who is currently killing it in the world. There, there's going to be some episodes where we talk to folks who are fairly new. Um, there's going to be episodes where we talk to pros, uh, but one thing in common, uh, that we vet out our guests for, we make sure that they've done deals, uh, and we make sure they've got a good mindset. You know, they've got a good brain in between their uh, ears. So (laughs) with that being said, guys, um, we're going to wrap this show up and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. We'll catch you guys later. Peace. See ya. What up, guys? Thank you for watching or listening to another episode. And look, here's the deal. If you got value out of today's episode, we kindly ask that you subscribe and like and get this bad boy going. And look, if you're in Florida, we're in Florida. That's our marketplace. And we want to help your deals get to the finish line. So if you got any deals that need help with Dispo, send us an email. We're at deals at unwindinvestments.com. You can also submit it via our property submission form online at unwindinvestments.com slash deals and guys we want you to be the next guest on our show so get out there and hustle and grind and let's get to work we'll see you in the next episode peace